closer look at back to school during a pandemic. We hear from teachers, students, parents and district leaders as the new school year approaches and the challenges that lie ahead. 438, 78 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, more details after a woman swimming off the shore of Maine dies after a rare encounter with a shark. San Antonio Spurs anxious to get the season restarted, but first they will have to pick up this last scrimmage win or a win against the Indiana Pacers. We have a game day preview next. But first, let's take a look outside with live cam. It is soupy out there, as in muggy, soupy weather. Mike will let us know if we still have some of those scattered rain chances later today or throughout the week. Our San Antonio Spurs will re reopen the 2019-2020 season this Friday when they face the Kings at 7 p.m. But before that, they have one last scrimmage. Spurs experimental lineup has included pairing Derek White with DeJounte Murray in the backcourt and starting Lonnie Walker as well. That's left Bryn Forbes, who started for the last year and a half, coming off the bench for what could be the final eight games. Bryn was asked if he has something to prove in these eight games. I'm not sure games will change 150. You know, like I don't know how much more important eight games are than the 150. I've got something to prove. I've never stepped on the court without you know, feeling like I got a chip on my shoulder and prove somebody. The scrimmage against the Pacers set for 3 o'clock today. Friday's game against the Kings is at 7 p.m. And then on Sunday, the Spurs will face off against the Memphis Grizzlies. That one's starting at 3. I believe all of those games, including today's scrimmage, are on Fox Sports Southwest. You can also stream, if you have a Hulu account, any Fox Sports as well. Good to know. Thank you, Sarah Costa. 443, 78 degrees. Still ahead, members of a local American Legion post need your help finding a World War II tank that was recently stolen. Plus, a closer look at a rare possible shark attack that left a woman dead off the coast of Maine. Well, a possible shark attack has killed a swimmer in Maine, ABC's Mona Kozar Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. Hi. Hi. I think we're working on a technical glitch. Can we roll the package, guys, or do we? In this morning's GMA First Look, a fatal shark attack in Maine. A woman swimming off the shore of Bailey Island in Maine, dying after a rare encounter with a shark. Very, very, very uncommon. Um, it's uh, the cooler waters of Maine are, are not uh, very favorable to most species of sharks. Uh, but one that uh, it is favorable to, unfortunately, and perhaps uh, was involved in this case, and that's the white shark, uh, which uh, we know is, is being found in, in, in greater abundance now. Kayakers brought the woman to shore where she was later pronounced dead. This, the first shark attack in Maine in 10 years. The near shore waters uh, where we like to go for recreational purposes are uh, the dining rooms of, of those animals that live in the sea. More on that coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. Thieves targeting a cannon, taking off with that heavy piece of equipment. The theft happened at an American Legion post on Fredericksburg Road. Jesse de Gallardo says its members are asking that you call police if you know where it is. Anyone seen a 57 millimeter cannon like this one? Now gone, it was one of two at the American Legion Alamo Post Number no. 2 on Fredericksburg Road. People that drive by this post identify the post because of the guns out front. But instead of thieves somehow hauling away the one in front of the post. They took the harder one to take and left the easier one, possibly because they couldn't actually figure out how to hook it up. Left behind was a tire jack they may have used. As you can see, they just, uh, Drag that thing away. After all, they say its wheels didn't turn. Which is really a bad idea. Dedicated in 1946, the cannons are said to symbolize the service and sacrifice during World War II. Shame on you for even taking it. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Reminds me of the flag. Instead of come and take it, please return it. Please do. Mm -hmm. Let's check traffic right now. It is 448.
Marcus? And right now, as we take a look at the roadways, you can see a uh, map still looking pretty good. We still have some construction out there, folks. So just for, be advised that in certain areas, you will have to slow down. Like if you're outbound on I-10 out there at Hoyer Road, they've got a number of uh, emergency vehicles, or construction vehicles rather, out there. 35 and 1604, no issues there. There's that construction there, I-10 and Hoyerman Road. And let's move over 410 at Fredericksburg Road. So far, no issues there. We have a few vehicles on the eastbound and the westbound lanes, but nothing that should slow you down. There's I-10 at 1604, looking back in towards uh, the UTSA area. And I'm not really sure why we have that discoloration there in the center screen, but uh, maybe it's a uh, getting us to look forward to Christmas with all that twinkling. Who knows? I-10 and Frio inbound and outbound lanes look pretty good right now. Both the upper and lower decks of I-10 for eastbound and westbound running smoothly at this point. I see what you did. I see what you did. Your Christmas <laughs> carols whistling here. How many days? I don't, I don't know. I, I'm uh, close, getting closer. I mean, what, we're less than 100 days till the election, so. And people keep dropping out of the uh, Black Friday. Uh, yeah, less, fewer, uh, more and more retailers are saying, yep, we're not going to open up on Thanksgiving. I'm so, what, 150? Oh, 150 days. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because three, uh, three days shy of, of five months. So. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Um, you were talking about the rain yesterday, which, you know, I, our app is fantastic, but it's a tease at times. Because all of a sudden, <laughs> in the evening, it's like, hey, there's moderate rain detected in your area, which it does a great job. And then I'm like, all right, great. I, I didn't get any. Oh, you were disappointed. No. I was disappointed, yeah. But some folks did get a couple of showers. So, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, the app is great to have, by the way, uh, because it can tell you where the rain is. And you can check it out with uh, radar or anything else you need to do. But... Uh, Sometimes, yeah, Mother Nature does a little bit of the teasing. The app does not. Great looking sunset yesterday over there at Windcrest. Thank you for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And there's that nice blanket of humidity sitting on top of us. Uh, temperatures are uh, right around three degrees above normal here in town. The mid upper 70s, some lower 70s in the hill country. And, and again, these numbers are just Oh, it's that that blanket of humidity and wet towel that's uh, wrapped around us right now. And uh, the humidity will, as it usually does, drop a little bit, but we'll still have dew points in the mid 60s later on today. So you still are above 60. There's still going to be a bit of a heat index to deal with. So with temperatures getting up into the mid 90s and then uh, that's going to be right around dinner time and then they will be dropping down and a little bit but we'll still have those heat index readings getting up into the uh, low hundreds around most all of the area and you might as well get used to that because that's what's going to be sticking around for uh, the rest of the weekend going into the weekend. Now the the hope for a little bit of rain and you can see this on the water vapor imagery which looks at the moisture in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere is a little bit of a spin right here off off the coast centered about um, maybe about Houston or so. I mean, it, it's just a basically a glitch in the atmosphere is the best way to describe it. However, this is enough to get those afternoon showers going around here, which is obviously what we had yesterday, and that's what we're going to be seeing again today. So here's satellite radar going back uh, about 12 hours, and there's some of those showers that my phone alerted me to, but uh, didn't get me in my backyard, unfortunately, and you may have been in the same boat or you were in Sarah's boat and you got some of that rain. So uh, we'll have that again today. And, and once again, here's that uh, little bit showing up on the satellite picture. There's that little bit of a, a circulation right there. So again, that will help to kind of get the atmosphere going somewhat. So that's why we see a couple of those or we'll see a couple of those scattered showers around here later on today. 89 degrees at noon. I'm gonna call it mostly cloudy skies, that mixture of sunshine and clouds. Same thing later on this afternoon. And one or two of those showers, 96 normal high temperature, the 30 year average. So that's what you would expect this time of year. And that's pretty much going to be the call throughout the rest of the week. Although temperatures will add another degree, add another degree. Not looking at hundreds though this weekend. So that's a little bit of a break. And again, another small chance for a couple of showers around here. at all you're whistling Christmas carols. I think it's nice. It's it makes it feel colder. Yeah, that and it's just something to look forward to. It's been kind of a weird year. We need some hope. We do. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. I disagree with you there. Yeah, 453, 78 degrees. Well, one of the biggest music festivals is going virtual this year. We'll take a look at the lineup for Lollapalooza, which is pivoting to online.
A highly anticipated major movie blockbuster could be the key to getting other movies released in theaters. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Some details about how the first big blockbuster to hit theaters in the age of the COVID-19 pandemic will be rolled out. Warner Brothers says it'll open Tenet overseas on August 26th, then in the U.S. September 3rd, cities that are open for business. A lot of attention will be on Tenet as it opens in this unique way to see if the $200 million Christopher Nolan film has a chance of recouping its massive budget and to see if it can serve as a blueprint for getting other major studio films back in theaters. Lollapalooza going virtual this year, announcing the lineup for the festival which is pivoting to online. Expect performances from Paul McCartney, Metallica, Lord, Imagine Dragons, and more, as well as archive sets from past Lala performances. It all starts this Thursday. Juice World's posthumous album Legends Never Die is number one for a second straight week on the Billboard 200 album chart. The Chicks, formerly known as the Dixie Chicks, debut in third with their first album in 14 years. Game of Thrones star Sophie Turner and musician Joe Jonas are parents, announcing the birth of their first baby. Aside from the news of the birth, they didn't give out any other details. The two were married last year. And Grammy-nominated rapper Soldier Boy with a birthday today, he's 30 while Saved by the Bell actress Elizabeth Berkley is 48. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Well, we are just getting started here on GMSA. It's about 3 till 5, 78 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, some financial relief could be in sight after Senate Republicans show off a new $1 trillion coronavirus relief plan. What that means for you. You're looking to get behind the wheel of the new 2021 Ford Bronco. You may have to wait a little while. We'll tell you why in Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a San Antonio woman now recovering after spending more than two weeks in a medically induced coma due to coronavirus. Plus a look at what's next after Senate Republicans show off a brand new $1 trillion coronavirus relief plan. And outside with live cam, tons of humidity, more than enough to share. Do we have more rain in the forecast and when do things really start to heat up around here? We'll get an update from Mike. Good morning to you. Hope you slept well or had a good overnight shift. It is Tuesday, July 28th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I slept well. You too. Yeah. Overall. Overall, I mean, I woke up to some allergies this morning. I know you said you were sniffling, too. Yeah, we're thinking it's got to be mold from those hit or miss showers and storms over the last couple of days, Mike. Yeah, and we got a lot of moisture left over in the ground from uh, some of the heavier rain that we had over the weekend. Some folks did get a little bit of rain uh, yesterday, of course, and uh, it's... It it helped uh, some of us or a lot of us did not get any rain. That's going to be the situation again today. We're at 78 degrees right now in town. And uh, the other thing that doesn't really help out is that top number dew point 74. A lot of moisture in the atmosphere. And so that's why when you step outside this morning, it's like Ugh, it's humid out there. Aquifer did go up another half a foot, which is good news. But it's that 10 day average, the bottom number that still makes all the difference because uh, as that stays below 660, then the uh, water restrictions stay in place, so 554.8. And speaking of those allergens, yep, mold is on the high side, up to 1300. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out uh, just after some roughly 7 o'clock. All right, we do have more rain chances, and this is the uh, the satellite picture going back to yesterday, and you can see that we've got well those few little showers that popped up right there died down basically once the sun went down. That's going to be the situation again today, and the reason for it is that little circulation right there. It is just a sort of a glitch in the atmosphere is the best way to describe it. And that's why we are going to be seeing some of those uh, showers around there uh, throughout the rest of today. So cloudy, warm and humid today, partly sunny shower, maybe a storm mid 90s. Um, but the heat index is definitely going to be up there. Roughly the same situation tomorrow. It's going to be a repeat of today, mid and, well, in some cases, upperish 90s. Then we go into the rest of the week. More sunshine mixed in with the clouds and it is going to be heating up a bit more. We're going to be looking at upper 90s. Uh, 100 is going to be close in a lot of locations. Also, there may be another chance for a stray shower or two by the weekend to start off the month of August. Details on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Marcus Trujillo. All quiet on the roads so far. So we're off to a pretty good start, Mike. We had some overnight construction and some of that is already wrapping up. And as we take a look at a 
Trans guide right now, move over from the map. You can see I-10 and Frio inbound outbound lanes right now. No issues. Now there should, shouldn't be any damp spots on the roadways, but just in case, put away those distractions this morning, those cell phones, those coffee cups, and both hands on the wheel. Sarah? Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, firefighters were called out to an abandoned house that went up in flames. It happened around 2.30 this morning in the 1100 block of Menchaca, just northwest of downtown. When firefighters got there, they found heavy flames coming out of a back bedroom. They were able to quickly put it out. Officials say arson investigators were called in since the house is where some homeless people have been staying on and off. New relief for struggling Americans may soon be coming. Senate Republicans have unveiled a new $1 trillion coronavirus relief plan. As CNN's Whitney Wilde reports, this comes after the race for a safe and effective vaccine takes major steps becoming a reality. This is a bill about back to school, back to child care and back to work. Senate Republicans unveiling their newly proposed $1 trillion COVID aid package Monday, the HEALS Act. That's health economic assistance, liability protection, and schools. The GOP's plan includes another round of stimulus checks, cuts enhanced employment benefits from $600 to $200, and would allocate billions to testing and reopening schools. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer slammed the Republicans' proposals and the months it took them to draw them up as a slow-motion train wreck. Not only do we not know if the president supports any of these proposals, we don't even know if Senate Republicans fully support them. Now, President Trump says the vaccine race known as Operation Warp Speed is living up to its name. We've shaved years off of the time that it takes to develop a vaccine, in some cases many years. And we've done it while maintaining the FDA gold standard for safety. Having these companies produce the vaccines as we speak and as soon as they are confirmed to be safe and effective, we'll have tens of millions of doses able to distribute across the country. At the White House, I'm Whitney Wild reporting. Well, San Antonio woman spends more than two weeks in a medically induced coma after a COVID-19 diagnosis. 42-year-old Christina Morales says she began having body aches on June 6. A few days later, she tested positive for COVID-19, and by June 11th, she was struggling to breathe and ended up at Crista Santa Rosa Hospital in the medical center. Morales says she was placed into a medically induced coma and intubated. That's where doctors place a tube down a patient's throat so they can be placed on a ventilator to help them breathe. Morales says it's now difficult to move around the house and has a message for those who don't believe in COVID-19. I'm on uh, several inhalers, steroids, and then all my vitamins that I take daily. And then, of course, my oxygen that I have to have on. And I hear a lot of people that don't believe in it, don't we think it's a hoax. It's the government, the government running it. No, they nearly took my life, and I'm lucky to be here today. Morales says it's still unknown how long she will be dealing with these lingering effects of COVID-19. Well, school districts across the state are requiring teachers to teach from within their classrooms for a virtual learning process. One of those school districts is Northeast Independent School District here in San Antonio. Aubrey Chancellor with the district says they feel it'll be the best way for their students to get a better education. And district also providing child care for teachers with children grades kindergarten through fifth grade. With many safety measures in place, teachers will be alone in classrooms with little no interaction and masks will be required when they're outside of the classroom. Chancellor says it's a requirement teachers be physically present, but exceptions will be made for some. If there are extenuating health circumstances and they have something of that nature, um, then we will work with them and there could be exceptions made. SAISD is another school district requiring teachers to teach from their classrooms. However, the San Antonio Alliance of Teachers says it doesn't agree with that decision. They say they feel the spread of COVID-19 is still out of control. To see their full statement, visit our website at ksat.com. Well, a switch in plans for the first presidential debate ahead of the November election. The University of Notre Dame announced that it's pulling out from hosting the event. Officials said that's because of the concerns over the coronavirus. The debate was scheduled for September 29th. The early voting period for that November election is being extended. Governor Greg Abbott says it will run from October 13th through October 30th. Marked mail-in ballots can also 
be hand delivered up till Election Day. Governor Abbott says the change will give Texans the flexibility to cast their ballots while staying safe. Election Day is November 3rd. Tuesday morning, 508, 78 degrees. Still ahead, would you wait 18 months? To demand for the vehicle. If you're thinking your child may not be getting enough exercise, you may be right. The American Heart Association says lack of movement can be problematic to their overall health in the future. Just ahead, a look at some of the best easy ways to get your kids moving again. Let's take a look outside with live cam 78 degrees. Muggy morning today. Michael let us know if chances of rain are in our future. Maybe again for another stray shower when we come back. Welcome back 512 on your Tuesday morning. If your child seems to be spending way too much time playing Fortnite, it may be time to get outside. As Stephanie Cerner reports, the researchers from the American Heart Association say children may not be getting enough exercise. It's no secret the pandemic has put a pause on our summer plans, but don't let that stop your kids from getting some much needed exercise. Researchers say children are spending too much time in front of screens instead of being active. Experts have found more than half of all kids in the U.S. struggle to meet cardiorespiratory fitness guidelines. Those guidelines measure the lungs and blood circulation in children. It can have an impact on both physical and mental health beyond childhood and is crucial for maintaining a healthy heart. Incorporating more exercise into their daily routine may seem like a daunting task, but it doesn't have to be. Researchers say the best way to get your kids moving can be as simple as a daily walk or bike ride. Experts say even though it may take time, it's possible for kids to change their habits and to adopt more movement into their daily routines. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. It's now 513, 78 degrees. The new Ford Bronco is such a hit, it's actually causing problems for Ford. Those details just ahead. When migraine strikes, dissolve it with Nurtec. The only quick dissolve treatment for migraine attacks that can get many people back to normal activities and last up to 48 hours with just one dose. Wonderful. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec. The most common side effect was nausea. Nurtec. One dose. Wonderful. We can't just take from nature, so we collaborate. Ocean Spray works with nature every day to farm in a sustainable way. The Capital One Walmart Rewards Card puts cash back in your wallet. Earn 5% cash back on everything you buy at walmart.com. Mom, paper towels! Including things for the science fair. What's in your wallet? 516, Google planning for a long pandemic, telling employees to work from home at least through next summer. ABC's Mono Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bytes, Google employees will stay home until next summer. The company's 200,000 staffers will work from home through at least June, moving back an initial January timeline. It's the first U.S. firm to push its office return into the second half of 2021. More proof the Ford Bronco is more popular than ever. The automaker is bringing back the SUV in a 2021 model, but the new interest recently crashed Ford's website, and hopeful owners are now facing an 18-month waiting list. A new female empowerment campaign has taken off on Instagram. Millions of everyday women and celebrities are posting black and white photos of themselves, along with hashtags challenge accepted and women supporting women. They're nominating other women to take the challenge as a way to inspire and support one another. So here you go. I'm challenging you. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Right now on KSAT.com, Black Friday will look different this year as Target and Walmart have announced they will be closed on Thanksgiving Day, ending a decade-long tradition. 
The moves come as stores are rethinking Black Friday and store doorbusters as they try to curb the spread of coronavirus. Target has announced that the holiday deals will begin starting in October. They say this will be a way to shop safely and conveniently without worrying about missing out on deals. As for Walmart, they announced that not only will their stores be closed, but they are handing out more bonuses to certain employees. Full-time store, club, distribution center, and fulfillment center associates who receive hourly wage will get a $300 bonus, and part-time employees will get $150. Now, this is just the beginning of holiday shopping news as it seems it may be the official end of Black Friday and how we shop after Thanksgiving. Follow KSAT.com for all the latest as we get closer to the holiday season. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. 18 minutes past the hour. We're going to check in with Officer Marcus Trujillo for Time Saver Traffic. And right now, as we take a look at the roadways, no problems. So we're going to move over to Transguide from the map. Right now, I-10 Frio still looking great. But take a look here. This is, uh, well, if, let me make an adjustment there. There we go. Now, 37 South Cross North and Southbound Lane still looking great right now. No delays. 21 in Jones Mallsburger, no problems there. And 35 at Top Warren starting to see some steady traffic on those southbound main lanes, but really not too bad right now. 21 Sprucewood Lane looking great and 37 at Jones Avenue. No problems there. There's the I-10 410 interchange. So all in all, not a bad commute this morning if you're getting ready to head out the door. Marcus, yesterday you were talking about how the rain over the weekend from Hannah was cold yes, rain. It was cold water. So I purposely stepped out. I was in sitting in my driveway and it started raining. I was like, is it cold? <laughs> it was, you were right. It and was, it, it was, was it was cold. Because huh. temperatures way up high in the atmosphere are obviously a lot colder. And so you get those little drops of water cold enough and it carries that colder air down here. Why well, we always refer to sometimes rain cooled air. So. And the, these may be tropical downpours, but they've had what hundreds of miles to, to build up before they make here and drop the rain, right? Well, tropic, I mean, Call it a tropical downpour because you have all this tropical moisture mm -hmm. kind of in place and a lot of times you get it sort of squeezed out. It's like squeezing out a, a sponge that's full of water. It can go, you know, and, and all of a sudden a bunch of water comes out very, very quickly. The reason why we call it uh, tropical downpours a lot of times like that. So, uh, we will have a couple more of those coming up later on today. Yesterday, oh goodness gracious. If you were blessed to get uh, some of that rain, great. But other folks were enjoying as a... Uh, Mr. Schiller says God's beautiful sunset. Hey, dew point temperatures are going to be staying up there. Now, right now, uh, there's a bunch of humidity in the air, and you can feel it when you step outside. And we're going to keep these numbers uh, in the afternoon hours up in the mid 60s. So we will be dealing with heat index readings uh, about, say, five, six, seven degrees above the actual air temperatures in the afternoon. So, for instance, today, you're going to be making it up to 96 for a high of uh, some upper 90s off to the west. And we're not seeing a lot of triple digit reading, so that's one benefit. But because the moisture takes a lot more energy to heat up, so you don't see as widespread uh, triple digit readings, but it's going to feel like it. So we'll be getting up to about 102 later on today. 104, that's what it will be feeling like in 104 in Pleasanton. And like I said, that's going to be pretty much the take throughout the uh, next few days. Now, there's that little circulation right there, right around Houston. That's enough to get the atmosphere kind of churned up, and so that's why we will see some of those uh, uh, pop-up showers, maybe a thunderstorm later on today. Obviously, there's nothing showing up on radar right now, nor even really out off to the east of us uh, down here to the south. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, thunderstorms, but there'll be a few of these trying to come on in here with the sea breeze and the atmosphere. It doesn't have a tight lid on it is the best way to uh, describe it, so that's what computer models are indicating. This model does tend to kind of paint things in with a broad brush. Uh, it's going to be obviously scattered. The majority of everything is going to be east of uh, I-35. That'll be the situation tomorrow as well. And then not so much as we get into Thursday, Friday. What's really going to be interesting is this weekend and watch what happens on Saturday. Saturday morning, something's coming down here from the north and it looks like we're going to be getting more of a northerly flow. Now we'll still be on the hot side Saturday. But this disturbance is coming down here from the north, which is sort of a, a different, you don't want to use the word cold front, but it, it's almost like a little bit of a, a front that's going to try and move on through here. 
And the first, the second thought is always, ooh, colder time. No, we're not going to see any drop in temperatures, unfortunately. 89 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies, and then high temperature today up to 96. And again, one or two of those showers are going to be popping up around here. Now, as far as tomorrow, pretty much same as today. Then we get into Thursday, 98 degrees, and we'll be up there in the upper 90s. And again, that's that one thermometer out there at the airport. So in your backyard, it may actually touch triple digits, but uh, we'll definitely have the humidity hanging around here so it'll feel hotter than that. One or two showers today, tomorrow, as well as Saturday and Sunday. Our producer wants you to hit Vegas with those morning lows, all sevens. That's what he was talking about. He's like, can you make a, a slot machine? Yeah, yeah, I think it's a good idea. So, be nice. All right, <laughs> thanks, Mike. Right now we're at 523, 78 degrees. Up next in your morning spotlight, a highly anticipated Christopher Nolan film will finally be making its way into theaters. Movie and music news now, even in the entertainment world, there's no escaping the pandemic. CNN's David Daniel explains in your Hollywood Minute. All I have for you is a word. Tenet. Tenet will open in theaters this summer after all, just under the wire. Warner Brothers announced the time-twisting thriller from Christopher Nolan will debut on August 26th in 70 overseas territories where theaters are reopening. Then Tenet will premiere in select U.S. theaters on September 3rd, just before Labor Day weekend. Hopefully, it reminds people of what power can do to an individual, to uh, a nation, to a world. Filmmaker Adam McKay Kay took on the mortgage crisis in The Big Short and politics in Vice. Now he's tackling the search for a COVID-19 vaccine. McKay is executive producing a limited series for HBO based on Brendan Burrell's upcoming nonfiction book, The First Shot, about the global race to develop a vaccine for the coronavirus. Katy Perry has good news and bad news for her fans. Bad news first, right? The singer revealed on Twitter that due to unavoidable production delays, her upcoming album Smile will arrive August 28th, two weeks later than scheduled. The good news? Perry, who's pregnant, is launching Smile Sundays, weekly live streams of banter, music, and more, which Perry says she'll do until either the album drops or the baby arrives. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Okay, Mark wants to go see Tenet, but then he was actually asking me to see it before him. It looks so complicated. I just want him to come out because the trailer's been in theaters for like four months straight now. They keep bumping it and bumping it due to COVID, of course. I'm tired of complicated. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want simple. Something simple. Right now we're at 528, 78 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, sports fans might have to make do without watching some of their favorite athletes take the field this year. We'll explain. Look at why San Antonio is becoming one of the worst places for people riding motorcycles. And you don't want to get a kiss from this bug. Why a spike in the so-called kissing bugs are causing concern from Texas scientists. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is already July 28th. What, two more days of July? Uh, let's see Wait, here. Let's this, see. The last day month? is Friday. Friday the 31st. And then we jump right into August oh this my weekend. Gosh, August mm -hmm. is here. And so are the temperatures later this week as soon as we start August, right, Mike? Yeah, well, even today and the next few days, we're going to be the normal high temperature right now is 96 degrees. That's basically we're going to be in that ballpark the next few days and getting even a little bit higher than that. So yesterday we did creep up to 97. New Braunfels uh, hit 100. There weren't a whole lot of triple digits on the map, but obviously there was enough sunshine. And that's going to be the ballpark, going to be the, the situation again today. We'll be in the ballpark of normal normal right now is uh, at 96 degrees 89 today at noon and we'll have partly cloudy skies kind of a mixture of sunshine and clouds out there of course some folks did get a couple of uh, showers uh, even a thunderstorm to pop up yesterday that's going to be the situation again today one or two of them out there not many, but if you get one or two of them consider yourself very fortunate mold is definitely on the high side thanks to all the moisture out there as well as the moisture in the ground. So 
a couple of rain chances here and then maybe even down the road we see a couple of rain chances as we start off the month of August. Details on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, for the first hour of the show, it's been kind of quiet. We're we're doing great out there on the roadways, Mike. So as we take a look at the map, you can see no delays, everything in the green. So that's the great news. Let's switch over trans guide live view out there through these cameras. 35 at Evans traffic is definitely starting to pick up in volume outside of 1604. Once you reach 1604, it kind of uh, eases up just a little bit. So 37 in Jones, north and southbound lanes here of 37 right in the downtown vicinity. No problems. Then Highway 90 at 36th Street still have some flashing lights, but those are off on the access road. Main lane still looking pretty good with no problems there. 21 at Grayson. Sarah. Thank you, Marcus. A late night fire has made a mess out of a north side business. It burned through a mechanic shop on West Avenue near Blanco Road. Our Katrina Weber is live at the scene where it seems a cleanup has been going on all night. Katrina, how bad is the damage? Well, firefighters estimated at about $15,000, but I can tell you what that looks like here is a lot of water and soot inside that back part of the building. There also are some broken windows on the bay doors there. I can also see a couple of vehicles inside, but it's hard to tell the condition of those. But firefighters got to this fire especially quickly because their fire station is right across the street. Still, they found smoke pouring out of the building shortly after 10 last night. They had to force their way inside the business because it was closed at that time. But they say they kept the fire contained to just one car that was in the bay part of the shop. But again, it looks like the smoke did travel throughout. And there's a repair company here right now. They told me that they're here to board up the business. I don't know if that means that they will just board up the back section and perhaps they'll be able to operate out of the front or if this whole thing will be shut down. We'll find out a, bit, a little bit later on this morning uh, when the employees arrive. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Professional sports teams getting a little chin music from the coronavirus. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, the ongoing pandemic has league officials making adjustments to schedules. Sports fans won't have as much to cheer about this year. Even with the best expertise, the best intentions, the most humane intentions, it's a tightrope walk. National Football League Commissioner Roger Goodell has canceled the 2020 preseason due to COVID-19. The NFL is working to make the full contact game safer. We got the message that people wanted football. That's not the reason to play, that people want it. But if we can do it in a way that is as safe as it possibly can be, then we should and we will. And that's what we're going to do. However, some say the league may be forced to punt. What does common sense tell you about the possibility of getting through a full football season? doesn't make much sense. Some in Major League Baseball, which already shortened its season, also balking. I'm scared. I, mean, I really am. My level of concern went from about an 8 to a 12. Two Monday night games were postponed because of COVID-19, and numerous Florida Marlins players and coaches tested positive, according to ESPN. We want sports. We don't need sports. And if, if I have to prove my credentials as a guy who's interested in sports, then people haven't been paying attention. I'm John Lawrence reporting. New overnight, Malaysia's former prime minister has been found guilty of seven charges related to the 1MDB scandal. The 1MDB scandal saw billions of dollars of taxpayer money fuzzle, funneled and embezzled out of Malaysia. The former prime minister faces prison time and steep fines for abuse of power and criminal breach of trust. He was also convicted of money laundering after millions of dollars ended up in his personal bank accounts. His lawyers say they will appeal his convictions. A caravan of cars honked their way past an assisted living facility in New Jersey to celebrate a woman who turned 109 yesterday. Mary Ruger Leonardi was born July 27, 1911, meaning she was seven years old during the Spanish flu pandemic. She was one of the first women to vote in the U.S. and still votes today. Her secret to a long life, stay clean, healthy. Keep out of trouble and be nice to your neighbors. She looks fantastic for 109 years old. I love that. Keep out of, keep out of trouble. Keep out of trouble. Easier said than done. <laughs> right, right now, 536, 78 degrees. Still ahead, a look at why Texas AgriLife experts are worried about a spike they've been seeing in the kissing bug population. And last year, more than 400 motorcyclists were killed here in the state of Texas. Up next, why San Antonio is one of the worst cities when it comes to motorcycle safety. Let's take a look outside with live cam 78 degrees. Welcome humidity again. It's like um, 
What is that movie called? The one that goes, that repeats itself. Groundhog, Groundhog Day. Day. Groundhog Day when you open the door with that humidity. Mike will let you know about your forecast when you come back. Right now it's 540. On average, one motorcyclist dies every day on Texas roads. And during these summer months, transportation officials are urging Texans to exercise caution and limit distractions while on the road. Our Max Massey joins us with the latest. in front of the rider. Pay special attention at intersections. Close to one third of motorcycle deaths happen at roadway intersections. Give driving your full attention. Consequences. Look twice before changing lanes. Check mirrors, check blind spots, and always use your turn signal. Give motorcyclists room when passing them. Move over to the passing lane and don't crowd the motorcyclist's full lane. Stay back. If you are behind a motorcycle, always maintain a safe following distance. When a motorcyclist downshifts instead of applying the brake to slow down, it can catch drivers off guard since there are no brake lights to signal that they are reducing their speed. Always remember to slow down. Please obey the posted speed limit. This is all part of the End the Streak campaign, an effort to stop deadly driving. The streak is a grim statistic that shows November 7th of 2000, 20 years ago, was the last deathless day on Texas roads. So make sure to drive smart, be safe, and put the phone down. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 542 and 78 degrees. Up next, why experts say you should be concerned about a rise in the population of kissing bugs, what they are, and why they can be dangerous. Population spike, and they fear that it could lead to an increase of Chagas disease in dogs and humans. Gabe Hammer with Texas A&M AgriLife Research says this increase has occurred in multiple regions of the state this year. One site in particular near Mission, which is a four hour drive south of San Antonio. Hammer says he collected 115 kissing bugs in just three hours in one night. He says this is worrisome because Chagas can be a fatal disease that can lay dormant for 20 to 30 years. When the parasite wakes up, it can begin to feed on your heart have a couple in resin here <laughs> uh, to give you a size estimate. Um, they are rather large, so they get up to close to an inch as an adult stage, and uh, they feed on blood throughout the whole life. So fr from nymphs, so they go through five nymphal instars, then they feed on blood as an adult. So they, they have to take a lot of blood meals just to survive and lay eggs. The lifespan of a kissing bug is about one year. Hammer says you can find them in your own backyard right here in San Antonio. To prevent kissing bugs from aggregating near your home, remove all piles of brush, leaves, or wood, basically anywhere where possums, rats, or other critters may live where the bugs will feed. And for more information on kissing bugs and how to spot them, head to ksat.com where you can find those pictures and information. First time I'm hearing about this, and I've lived back in San Antonio over 20 years. It's terrifying. Yeah, it's just I mean, one more thing for us to be terrified. I guess so. So this is where we bring in murder hornets to deal with the the kissing bugs. Just have the murder hornets versus kissing. Mm. Just let them, you know, fight it out. Let them fight it out. Okay. 546. Let's check traffic. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning. So what haven't we had happen this year yet? <laughs> uh, just wait. 2020. <laughs> we just keep getting Full more, of possibilities. More, more and more things happening. So now we have to worry about uh, more bugs. Okay, so the roadway is actually no problems out there. Uh, so if you are getting ready to head out the door, maybe you'll run over a couple and uh, reduce that population for us. 35 had been Singleman, no problems there. And then 35 at 410, traffic looking great. At least they don't move very quickly. I mean, I've, I get them on my, my back deck sometimes, and... These kinds of beetles? Those little... Those yeah. They're not things, beetles. Yeah. They're what? 
I, I don't know what their classification okay. is. But uh, another thing to worry about is that he was telling me that when you get bit by a kissing bug, yeah. you may not even know, you may not even feel it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why he says they tend to bite you in your sleep and then you wake up and your arm might be swollen just because hmm. they have to bite you over and over and over again for you to actually feel the pain. Look at the three of us. You got our attention right now. <laughs> it's, it's terrifying. We need to tell somebody about this, mm -hmm. okay? Permanently. Right. You What's just that? did tell somebody about it. I know. Well, we need to keep talking about it. Cause <laughs> this a is a big deal. <laughs> this is kind of, I feel like this is so left field. This came out of nowhere. We're dealing with everything, folks, all this wait. other stuff. Folks, put down the cup of coffee, go grab the bug spray, right. and spray the yard. Something like that. Or run them over, like Marcus said. Hey, uh, <laughs> just for about another, I've been reading on this uh, about another week or so, up through, um, well, not even that, up through this weekend, uh, you can see the comet. Neil Wise. Wise. Yes, and look up to the northwest, and just after a sunset, and about an hour after that, and speaking of, you know, this year's been very long, think about a year on the comet, 6,700 years. That's how long one year is for this comet, so yeah, that would be a long year if it was 2020. Anyway, um, yeah, you can look up to the northwest. Great looking picture there. Thank you very much for that. And the best is to go out there in Fredericksburg or out in the hill country where there's not much, uh, not many city lights out there to kind of ruin your view. So we're going to be uh, at noon. We're obviously cloudy, very warm and humid. Noon, partly sunny, upper 80s, and then make it up into the uh, kind of mid, 90, mid to upper 90s, seasonably hot, uh, which is 96 degrees is the normal high right now. That's exactly where we're going to be one of those uh, stray showers or two and then any rain is going to be dying down. It's going to be kind of a sultry evening if you decide to head on out and try and check out the uh, the comet. 78 degrees right now, 75 in Ball Verde and low 70s in parts of the hill country. Normal low temperature right now is 75. By the way, we have not hit the historically hottest time of the year. That is coming up on the 7th of August through the 16th. There's that 10 day period when the normal high temperature is 97 degrees, which is where we were yesterday, and we're going to be close to that again today. Of course, the heat index, though, is going to be up to uh, the low hundreds around the area, and that's going to be the case through the rest of the week. So satellite picture from yesterday. There were a few of those showers that popped up. You may have gotten the alert on your phone that said, hey, there's some rain in your area. Whether it comes into your backyard, that was a different situation. I got the alert and didn't get anything in my backyard, but uh, at least you'll have the chance again today because this little circulation right here off to the east of us, it is not much. It's just enough to kind of get the atmosphere in the afternoon sort of going to one or two of those showers. Obviously, most of them are going to be there along the, the coastal plain, which is what computer models are indicating. Uh, could be a couple of them popping up later on this morning and then by noontime. A few more will try and pop up there right along the coastal plain mid-afternoon. Same situation. There'll be one or two, a few more coming up here. And then by dinner time, we are going to be seeing one or two of these showers. Once the sun goes down again, they will then tend to uh, sort to die down. Upper level winds. There's that little low kind of sitting right off the coast. Not much of anything. Otherwise, we're sort of dominated still by the high and that's going to kind of scooch on out, allow the low to move on out of here and and that's going to get us into a period I think by Thursday, Friday. We don't really see anything as far as any more showers around here. What's interesting though is what's going to be happening by the weekend and this high is going to be far enough off to the west. We get on the front side of it and get a nice northerly flow around here and there's some uh, some computer models, some thinking that there's actually a little bit of a front that wants to lie across the northern portion of the state. Now, when I say that, immediately people think, okay, colder temperatures. No, that's not going to be the situation, but it would just maybe give us another chance for some rain by the weekend. So 89 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies, high temperature today. 96, partly sunny, a couple of showers uh, popping up around the area. Most everybody, unfortunately, won't see rain. It's only about a 20% chance for a couple of showers or two. About the same thing tomorrow, and then we will get up into the, uh, well, let's call it upper 90s Thursday through the weekend, and one or two of those isolated showers, not a great chance for rain. Thank you, Mike. Time check right now, 552. We're at 78 degrees. Up next, a British rom-com based on a true story about singing fishermen is now available through video on demand. We'll get a preview of Fisherman's Friends just ahead. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, seven, zero, eight, Fireball four, daily four, one, seven, zero, four, Fireball seven. Cash five, 11, 13, 19, 23, 33, Texas two-step, 20, 25, 30, 34, 
Mega Ball 17. What kind of music would I sing in? The Rock and Roller 1752. A group of fishermen find fame in Fisherman's Friends, based on a true story. Fisherman's Friends are not a lozenge, not something that you suck to clear your throat. I mean, they are, but not in this film. Uh, the Fisherman's Friends are a band who sing sea shanties, and they were singing sea shanties every Friday night. They would go down to the harbour in this very small little community and uh, just down by the sea in Cornwall. You've got a unique sound, and we believe we can help you get it released by a major label. <laughs> Daniel Mays plays the music exec who landed the fishermen. He discovered them, and they, he got, gave them a million-pound recording contract. They got into the top ten here in the UK. They had this roaring success. They're still going strong to this day. James Purefoy plays one of the singers, but what does he think of his singing? Like everybody, brilliant in the shower. Uh, in the bathroom, unbelievable. I could, I could, I could play the Royal Opera House, you know, but leave the shower, leave the bathroom, forget about it. So, um, no, I had no singing experience on film. It's part of the reason I wanted to do it. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Unemployment, domestic violence, and COVID-19. As the pandemic goes on, these issues could increase the potential for child abuse and neglect. That's why our KSAC community partners and the Children's Shelter are teaming up for a child abuse awareness town hall tomorrow. We'll have a panel of experts answering questions about the signs of abuse, how to report it, and where to seek help. Again, it's tomorrow from 2 to 3. You can watch it at KSAT.com or wherever you stream with our KSAT TV app. It's about three minutes till right now. Still ahead in the next half hour, GMSA. The Spurs getting ready to restart the regular season. But first, they have to play this final scrimmage against the Pacers today. We have a game day preview just ahead. And Trans Guy. There's 37 at South Cross. 281 is Joe Smaltzberger as we get an update on traffic and weather coming up together next. San Antonio Fire Department was busy overnight extinguishing two fires. And right now, investigators are trying to find out what caused them both. From learning remotely to star test requirements being dropped, the pandemic impacting students and teachers alike. We'll break down the very latest developments heading into the new school year. Taking a look outside with live cam 78 degrees. It is soupy out there, everyone. Mike will let you know if we are going to expect any more scattered showers throughout the day and will the temperatures continue to rise? Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, July 28th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Yesterday, I got a shower. It was cold. Not, not like a physical shower, <laughs> but one of the... <laughs> <laughs> well, we know Thank one God happened. Small favors. <laughs> we, yeah, you, you may have said too much, but that's okay. It's okay. That's okay. It's okay. That's okay. Everyone knows now. Everyone, everyone, everyone knows. Rain shower. Rain shower. Yes, and and there were a few around yesterday. I could smell the rain, and I was as I was Saturday taking... night, and she had a shower. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yes, there were a few of them around. You either could smell it, or perhaps you got the alert on your phone. We got that, and it's, you know, perks you up, and then it's like, oh darn. I didn't get that shower, but uh, there's going to be the same situation again today. So there will be one or two showers out there. And as Sarah mentioned, it is soupy. And so it feels like even though temperatures are in the upper 70s right now, it feels like the low and even some mid 80s around the area. Yeah, there's a ton of humidity out there. And also there is a little, little that little circulation way off there to the east, just sort of sitting right along the uh, the coast. And that's enough to get the atmosphere sort of just churned up. It, there's not like a lid on the atmosphere. And so that's why we had some of those showers yesterday. That's why we're going to have the chance for a couple of those showers later on today. Very few and far between. Don't get your hopes too high for, but if you do get one of them, consider yourself fortunate. Mold is on the high side this morning. 
temperatures. We are in the upper 70s and we'll continue with the kind of a slow increase this morning because of the cloud cover, the humidity will make it up into the upper 80s today by noon and then continue up in the mid 90s. Now normal high temperature is 96 degrees. That's what I'm going for with the high, but the humidity is going to be sticking around enough to where it's going to feel like the low hundreds later on today. And again, one or two of those showers. This pretty much is going to be a rinse and repeat type situation throughout the rest of the week and probably even a little hotter. We'll take a look at the first couple of days of August. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Marcus Trujillo. And boy, you really haven't had uh, much going on so far this morning, which is good news. It's been a pleasant uh, commute this morning for almost everyone this morning. Now we had a little bit of construction earlier this morning, but that's all cleared up and out of the way, folks. Take a look. Let's go over to Trans Guide right now. 37 in South Cross. No issues for the northbound or the southbound lanes at this point. 21 in Jones Falls are also looking pretty good right now. So dry roads and traffic not too bad as far as the volume. 35 at Top Roy and starting to pick up in volume as far as the north and the southbound lanes go with no issues. 281 and Sprucewood Lane. Mark. Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, a local business owner will need to schedule some repairs after a fire broke out overnight. Firefighters responded to the fire around 10 last night in the 11,800 block of West Avenue near the corner of Silver Sands Drive and a few blocks from Winston Churchill High School. Uh, firefighters tell us it was an auto repair business and one vehicle was damaged. Firefighters needed to break windows in order to put the fire out. Nobody was hurt and in the fire and investigators are still trying to figure out what started it. Well, arson investigators are looking to what caused a fire on the west side. Firefighters say it happened around 2.30 this morning in the 1100 block of Menchaca Street. That's in the neighborhood near North Zarzamora and Culebra. Firefighters say flames were coming out of a bedroom in the back of the house. They say the house was boarded up and took a lot of damage. However, they do not know how the fire started. For the first time in nearly a month, there are no new deaths reported in Bear County from the coronavirus. Last day where there were no deaths reported was back on June 29th. In addition, 355 new cases were reported in the county. Since hitting a peak in hospitalizations on July 13th, we've seen a slow, steady decline. However, only 11% of staffed beds are still available. Local health officials say we have a long way to go and nobody should get complacent with social distancing guidelines. Northeast ISD teachers will use their classrooms to teach virtually in the upcoming school year. Aubrey Chancellor with the district says they feel it will be the best way for their students to get a better education. The district will also provide child care for teachers with children in kindergarten through fifth grade. Instructors will be alone in classrooms with little to no interactions and masks will be required when they step outside of their classrooms. Chancellor says that although it is a requirement teachers be physically present, some exceptions will be made. If there are extenuating health circumstances and they have something of that nature, um, then we will work with them and there could be exceptions made. SAISD is another school district requiring teachers to use their classrooms. However, the San Antonio Alliance of Teachers says it doesn't agree with that decision. They say they feel the spread of COVID-19 is still out of control. To see their full statement, just visit our website, ksat.com. Staying with schools, Governor Greg Abbott says students in 5th and 8th grade will not be required to pass the STAR test in order to move on to the next grade level. However, some educators say the governor's actions don't go far enough. The Texas State Teachers Association says the governor should extend the order to STAR-related teacher evaluations. The association's president calling to suspend the teacher appraisal system and the A through F school account accountability system for the coming school year. And remember, we are following all the latest developments as we turn the corner into the new school year. To see all the KSAT's reporting, just head to back to school section of KSAT.com. Let's talk evictions. Protection has ended for those renting from certain federally backed properties. The federal moratorium on evictions expired last week, which means landlords can begin to issue notices to vacate this week. The protection applied to those living in properties backed by federally funded programs such as HUD, FHA, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac. However, attorneys say there are still some exemptions that could help keep some people in their homes. Some very limited groups of people may still uh, be protected from eviction until August 31st. And that's the exact kind of thing that we would want to talk to someone about on the hotline to walk them through whether or not their property is protected and what their particular rights are going forward. 
If you're in danger of eviction, here's what you should know. First, see if you can agree on a payment plan with your landlord. If not, your landlord should provide you with a 30-day notice to vacate. After that 30-day notice, the eviction process can begin. If you have questions, you can call a free local hotline. The number on your screen, 210-570-6135. The San Antonio Food Bank is expecting an increase in need as several federal assistant programs, such as a moratorium on evictions, come to an end this week. Food Bank President and CEO Eric Cooper says the number of people the organization helps each week doubled during the pandemic to 120,000 people. He says the Food Bank met with its large financial supporters to go over current inventory and demand. Cooper also says the need for volunteers is expected to grow as well. To learn more about how you can volunteer, just head to KSAT.com. The early voting period for the November election will be longer this year. Governor Abbott says it will run from October 13th through the 30th. Marked mail-in ballots can also be hand-delivered up until Election Day. The governor says the change will give Texans the flexibility to cast their ballots while staying safe. Election Day, of course, is November 3rd. Right now it's 608, 78 degrees. It's game day for the San Antonio Spurs. We will take a look at how the team is preparing for their final scrimmage game of the restarted season. Some health experts say kids are not getting enough exercise during the pandemic. After the break, we'll examine how a sedentary lifestyle could have lasting health impacts on your children. First, let's take a look outside with live cam. 78 degrees, the sun starting to creep up this morning, but there are some clouds out there and there's definitely some humidity. Mike will let you know about that in your forecast when we come back. Right now on KSAT.com, damage from Hurricane Hannah has caused Padre Island National Seashore to close until further notice. According to a post on the park's Facebook page, the Laguna and Gulf sides of the island both sustained damage. Park officials are hoping to reopen by the end of the week, but an official date has not been decided on yet. This is just one of the many places that Hurricane Hannah damaged this past weekend. Part of Bob Hall Pier collapsed in Corpus Christi as well. KSAT 12 meteorologists report the most extreme impacts from the storm was felt in the Rio Grande Valley area. We have several articles up now about the Category 1 storm that made landfall on Padre Island this past Saturday. We have more on Hurricane Hannah and all your weather coverage can be found on KSAT.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. 613, if your child's been a couch potato lately, it may be time to get them outdoors. Researchers from the American Heart Association say children have not been getting enough exercise. But Stephanie Cerner reports this can be problematic to their overall health in the future. It's no secret the pandemic has put a pause on our summer plans, but don't let that stop your kids from getting some much needed exercise. Researchers say children are spending too much time in front of screens instead of being active. Experts have found more than half of all kids in the U.S. struggle to meet cardiorespiratory fitness guidelines. Those guidelines measure the lungs and blood circulation in children. It can have an impact on both physical and mental health beyond childhood and is crucial for maintaining a healthy heart. Incorporating more exercise into their daily routine may seem like a daunting task, but it doesn't have to be. Researchers say the best way to get your kids moving can be as simple as a daily walk or bike ride. Experts say even though it may take time, it's possible for kids to change their habits and to adopt more movement into their daily routines. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio Spurs play their final scrimmage later today before they reopen the regular season. They will take on the Pacers inside the NBA bubble. It'll be another test run for the team's lineup experiments, included pairing Derek White with DeJounte Murray in the backcourt and starting Lonnie Walker as well. That leaves Brent Forbes, who started for the last year and a half, coming off the bench for what could be the final eight games. Brent was asked if he has something to prove in these final eight. I'm not sure games will change 150. You know, like, I don't know how much more important eight games are than the 150. I've got something to prove. I've never stepped on the court without, you know, feeling like I got a chip on my shoulder. I'm to prove somebody. Tip off for the Spurs Pacers scrimmage scheduled for three this afternoon, San Antonio time. You can watch the game on Fox Sports Southwest. Get all the highlights right here on KSAT 12. And remember, the regular season resumes this Friday for our Spurs. 
NFL canceling all preseason games this year amid the pandemic. It's the latest change the league will implement for the 2020 season. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell says that players and coaches will be tested every day for the virus as well. Meanwhile, healthy players who decided to play are participating in training camps. All players have been given the option to sit out this season due to the coronavirus. Remember, you can watch all those Spurs games on Fox Sports. And also, if you have a Hulu account, you can stream any of those Fox Sports channels as well. And as we get into the month of August, we'll let you know about a game that's playing right here on KSAT and ABC. That's right. Well, first, we're going to check in with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And right now, things still look great out there on the roadways. We're moving over to Transguide 281. Ed Grayson, north and south on lanes, picking up in volume. Not too bad here. I-10, 410, the interchange. Still have some flashing lights there. I-10 at Hoyerman Road, so watch out for that construction. Then tending to Callahan, eastbound, westbound lanes. Moving along nicely this morning. Thank you, Marcus. Well, that's beautiful, Mike. This is absolutely gorgeous. Nice oh, wow. view of the basically halfway, I mean, first quarter, moon and it's going to be full on Monday on the third and that is called according to the uh, old farmers almanac and some of the uh, the names that the Indians Native Americans gave it to it in and around the Great Lakes was the full sturgeon moon because this was the one of one of the best times to uh, fish for the, the sturgeons in a lot of the uh, some of the lakes around there Lake Champlain uh, also some of the, uh, the Great Lakes around there so yeah beautiful beautiful picture thank you very much for that hey uh, we are it's hot out there but we are getting into what is historically or about a week away, the hottest time of the year, August 7th through the 16th. That's when the average temperature, that's the 30 year average temperature, high is 97, low is 75. Right, you are, right now we're at 96 and 75. And you know, it's kind of a, a slow incline up to that. But then just two weeks after that, the normals drop down three two degrees respectively for the high and the low. And it, it drops off fairly quickly then as we go in toward the, the fall months. But uh, not a big cool down by versus September, <laughs> but and then to think, even though that's after the hottest time of the year, hottest temperature we ever got, we ever hit here in town was on September the 5th. And one year, I believe it was uh, 2005, we had that week of uh, September in the, the, the end of the month, and it was like 105 all week long, something like that. So just because the normals go down doesn't mean temperature is going to be going down. Hey, out there in the Atlantic Ocean, of course, we just got done with Hurricane Hannah. This is the next disturbance out here, which Hurricane Center is watching it as of right now and says there is a, well, a decent chance it could form up into a tropical system. But that's it as far as uh, right now that the Hurricane Center is looking at 78 degrees when you step outside this morning. And of course, the humidity, you can just kind of just run into it like a, a wet blanket out there. And later on today, we're going to make it up to 96 degrees. Again, normal high temperature and pretty close to normals all around the area. But with the humidity, of course, it's going to feel like it's well up into the low hundreds. We had a couple of showers pop up yesterday. You may have gotten the alert on your phone and they could have been just around the you know around the block just at arm's reach and just beyond arm's reach for some folks uh, most of us didn't see any rain that's going to be the situation again today but we've got this little disturbance right out here just about houston and uh it, it's not any big deal but enough to keep the atmosphere sort of churned up a little bit we don't have anything sitting right on top of us so that's why we do have that chance for a couple of these showers and the computer model Again, does tend to kind of draw things in with a bit of a broad brush, but it is showing at least those few scattered showers around the area. Same thing tomorrow, Thursday, don't think quite as much uh, as well as on Friday. Saturday, we'll get back into situation with a couple of scattered showers around the area Saturday and, and Sunday. And what's going to be interesting is instead of this coming in here from the coastal plain, they're going to be dropping down in here from the north. So we've got some sort of changes to the upper level wind pattern temporarily, and that's going to be pulling down some of that uh, from the north. It's not as though it's going to bring a front down through anything like that. Unfortunately, don't get our hopes up for that, but uh, it's, it's a, kind of an encouraging sign. 89 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies, high temperature today up to 96 and yeah, normal high right where it should be a couple of showers out there same thing tomorrow now, those numbers don't take into account though the humidity which will definitely be around and will continue to creep up a little bit more going in toward the weekend one or two showers today tomorrow one or two showers around Saturday and Sunday so not great rain chances just a couple of them all right just the messenger 
Yeah. Uh, try to remember that part, folks, okay? <laughs> he's, he's, really, a, he's a good guy. He's a really, he's a really good guy. We're not just saying that this time. 620, 78 degrees. <laughs> well, a possible shark attack has killed a swimmer in Maine. If confirmed, it would be the first recorded case of a deadly shark attack in the state. We'll have more after the break. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a free iced coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Yay! Great tasting and sure. With 9 grams of protein, 27 vitamins and minerals, and nutrients to support immune health. Facing leaks takes strength. So here's to the strong who trust in our performance and comfortable, long-lasting protection. Because your strength is supported by ours. Depend. The only thing stronger than us is you. Over time, you go nose blind to the odors in your home. But others smell this. That's why Febreze Plug has two alternating scents. And it eliminates odors for 1,200 hours. Feel the cool rush of Claritin Cool Mint Chewables. Powerful 24-hour non-drowsy allergy relief plus an immediate cooling sensation for your throat. Feel the clarity and live Claritin clear. 623 authorities in Maine are investigating what could be the first deadly shark attack in the state's history. Witnesses say they saw something grab a woman while she was swimming off the shore. ABC's Alex Perche has more. This morning, tragedy off the coast of Maine, where a woman has died after an apparent shark attack. Witnesses tell reporters on the scene that the woman's body was flung into the air by something in the water. It appears the female may have been attacked by some sort of animal. Police say two kayakers helped the victim get to shore, but she was pronounced dead at the scene. Outside New York City around the same time, two shark sightings forced the closure of several beaches on Long Island. Came out, shot out of the water, spun around, just didn't look like a dolphin. Fin, definitely a shark. Lifeguards who saw one of the sharks say it was a bull shark, an aggressive species that can grow up to eight feet long. Authorities later released a photo of a sea ray that washed up nearby with enormous bite marks. This was a sizable one, uh, and it can do some damage in the wrong situation, and it's a credit to the lifeguards working together with all these agencies to protect the residents. Experts say shark attacks are down this year as more people stay home due to the pandemic. But last month in North Carolina, a 16-year-old suffered 40 puncture wounds after fighting off a shark. I tried lifting my leg up out of the water and I saw, oh my God, it's a five-foot-long shark attached to my leg. Alex Perche, ABC News, New York. Google employees working from home until next summer. The company's 200,000 staffers have been told to stay home through at least June. Moving back an initial January timeline, it's the first U.S. firm to push its office return to the second half of 2021. The new Ford Bronco is more popular than ever. The automaker is bringing back the SUV in a 2021 model, but the new interest recently crashed Ford's website, and hopeful owners are now facing an 18-month waiting list. New female empowerment campaign has taken off on Instagram. Millions of everyday women and celebrities are posting black and white photos of themselves along with the hashtags challenge accepted and women supporting women. They're nominating other women to take the challenge as a way to inspire and support one another. The Emmy nominations will be announced later today. The Television Academy is planning a virtual award show hosted by comedian Jimmy Kimmel. It's unsure how that will work, but the BET Awards and the Daytime Emmys last month could give officials a blueprint. The Emmy Award Show broadcast is set to air September 20th on ABC. Well, it's 626 and 78 degrees. TxDOT is asking you to drive safely to protect everyone on the roads. After the break, we'll see how dangerous San Antonio's highways can be for motorcyclists. Many of us are well aware of bug bites. In our next half hour, we will learn more about a bug that kisses you, and that, di that kiss can be pretty dangerous. Transguide, we're getting an update from Officer Marcus Trujillo from the San Antonio Police Department. We'll be back. They've been pulling an all-night shift at this Northside Auto Mechanic Shop. That's all due to a fire that struck late last night. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you all about it. Coming up, the latest on a coronavirus stimulus package. I'm Andrew Dimber in Washington, D.C. with the details. 
Well, San Antonio is the most dangerous city in the state for motorcycle riders, and TxDOT wants to help make the roads safer for them. Outside with live cam, as we take a look at your sunrise, don't be surprised if you need a second shower today. It is that humid outside. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is July 28th. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. It definitely is super humid out there. I walked out, just felt like... Ugh. It's Ugh. Ugh kind of weather. Before we get to Ugh, Marcus, how are things looking? <laughs> <laughs> not so Ugg. Ugg. <laughs> I just get a new name. <laughs> your, your new name. So, but right now the, the roadways still look pretty good. So we've been very fortunate. No accidents all morning long. So let's see what Ugg has to say. It's better than what a lot of people call me. Anyway, um, <laughs> yes, it is extremely humid when you step outside this morning. And uh, not a bad view, though, looking at downtown from our uh, south side camera. Temperatures uh, throughout the rest of today, we're going to be up to 89 degrees at noon, 96 high temperature. That's normal. That's what you would expect uh, as far as the 30 year average temperature and one or two showers out there. Of course, there were a couple of them around yesterday. This is the uh, satellite loop going back to uh, yesterday and there's just those few. You may have gotten the uh, notification on your phone and then they sort of died back down, but we've got a little disturbance out here to the east of us. And so that's going to at least give us that chance for uh, a couple of showers to pop up. Not a great chance at all, but at least it's it's out there and one or two of us will see something. Mold is on the high side and I would venture a guess that it's going to be staying up there given the fact we've got some moisture in the ground as well as well as all this humidity. So we're uh, getting ready to wrap up the month of July start August. Will we see any big changes to the forecast? Here's a hint. No uh, details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and spoiler, well, it, temperatures. spoiler alert. <laughs> no summer. What's well, going on? Another thing, no, no accidents. Well, that's good. So there, good segue. No accidents <laughs> right now on the roadways. Let's take a look at a couple of trans guide cameras, folks. We're seeing some increase in the traffic, but nothing significant. Nothing that should delay your commute this morning. 604 Tradesman, you see no problems there for eastbound or westbound lanes. And 37 at South Cross, no one out there on the roadway. Let's move over to 21. Jones Mallsberger, north and southbound lanes. More than enough room out there. Just make sure you buckle up once you head out this morning. Mark? Thank you, sir. A late night fire has had workers at a north side auto repair shop working all night long. They're trying to clean up the mess that fire created. Katrina Weber is live over on West West Avenue View Blanco. Katrina, do firefighters know how this started yet? We have not heard an exact cause, but uh, they did tell us that the fire appeared to be contained to just one car. So it's possible it started either in or around that vehicle. Now, whatever it was, it had this place filled with smoke. This is Car X on uh, West Avenue. Firefighters were able to respond almost immediately around 10 o'clock last night because their fire station is right across the street. They had to force their way inside the building, but they were able to stop the flames from spreading. Still, all the smoke made its mark here. There's soot and also water inside part of the building. Some of the windows on the bay door were shattered as well. The damage estimated at about $15,000. But right now we have a crew here that is putting some boards up on the door. I did have a chance to talk to the manager of this business. He says that uh, they are waiting for the fire marshal to come and give them the okay, but he does expect that they will be able to be back in operation. He says those repairs are making it so they have fixed doors on there instead of the rolling doors uh, on this building. But he does expect that they will be able to open fairly soon, just as soon as they get the green light from the fire marshal. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. On average, one motorcyclist dies every day on Texas roads, and during the summer months, transportation officials are urging Texans to exercise caution and limit distractions while on the road. Max Massey has more on the campaign urging safer driving. This is the Share the Road Look Twice for Motorcycles campaign. It aims to alert drivers to the risks that motorcyclists face and suggests safety precautions drivers can take to both protect motorcyclists and protect themselves. The campaign reminds drivers that motorcycles are small and can be hard to see. Back in 2019, 412 motorcyclists were killed here in the state of Texas. More than 1,800 were seriously injured. The highest number of deadly motorcycle crashes last year occurred in San Antonio, Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, El Paso, Corpus Christi, Lubbock, and Odessa. TxDOT wants drivers to follow these safety tips to prevent vehicle and motorcycle crashes. 
take extra care when making a left turn. It's easy to misjudge the speed and proximity of an oncoming motorcycle. It's safest to let the motorcycle pass to avoid turning in front of the rider. Pay special attention at intersections. Close to one third of motorcycle deaths happen at roadway intersections. Give driving your full attention. Even a momentary distraction like a phone call or a text or changing the radio station can have deadly consequences. Look twice before changing lanes. Check mirrors, check blind spots, and always use your turn signal. Give motorcyclists room when passing them. Move over to the passing lane and don't crowd the motorcyclist's full lane. Stay back. If you are behind a motorcycle, always maintain a safe following distance. When a motorcyclist downshifts instead of applying the brake to slow down, it can catch drivers off guard since there are no brake lights to signal that they are reducing their speed. Always remember to slow down. Please obey the posted speed limit. This is all part of the End the Streak campaign, an effort to stop deadly driving. The streak is a grim statistic that shows November 7th of 2000, 20 years ago, was the last deathless day on Texas roads. So make sure to drive smart, be safe, and put the phone down. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. The fight against coronavirus being fought on two fronts as health officials try to contain COVID-19. Millions of unemployed Americans are still struggling to make ends meet. Time is running out on a critical financial lifeline, which is set to expire, while lawmakers can't seem to agree on what to do next. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. This morning, the staggering spread of the coronavirus. More than 16 million cases worldwide, but the U.S. continues to be the hardest hit. A quarter of all the cases across the globe right here in America. The death toll is climbing in Florida, over 6,000. The Sunshine State trailing only California for total confirmed positives. In those states seeing a spike, health officials urging more restrictions. So we can see what is happening in the south moving north. We do believe that there are states that do need to close their bars to decrease indoor gatherings to less than 10. There is some hope on the horizon in the race for a vaccine. Moderna, the first company in the U.S., heads into phase three for clinical trials. 30,000 Americans are expected to participate. Here's Dr. Anthony Fauci on Fox News. That makes me cautiously optimistic that we may have something here, but it's going to take a few months to determine whether or not we do. And there's another race in Congress and against time. 30 million Americans are set to lose a key coronavirus unemployment benefit. I don't know what we're going to do. Single mother Sherry Johnson says a cut in coronavirus unemployment benefits would financially cripple her family. Republicans are calling for another round of $1,200 stimulus checks. The American people need more help. But want to slash the $600 weekly payments for out-of-work Americans, while Democrats want to keep it going through to 2021. If you've lost your job through no fault on your own, Republicans say take a 30% tax cut. And Democrats unveiled their plan two months ago. Republicans just yesterday, but it could still be weeks before a deal gets done. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. The public will be able to pay their respects to late Congressman John Lewis outside the U.S. Capitol building today. It's the second day Lewis will be honored in Washington. His body laid in state in the Capitol Rotunda yesterday, making him the first black lawmaker to receive that honor. It was then moved outside because of the pandemic, where thousands of visitors paid their respects throughout the night. Lewis will lie in state in the Georgia Capitol building tomorrow before his funeral in Atlanta on Thursday. U.S. Attorney General William Barr will speak in front of the House Judiciary Committee today. Barr is expected co to contest congressional Democrats, he says, that are trying to discredit him. That's according to his opening statement, which the Department of Justice released yesterday. Some Democrats say Barr intervened in, intervened in federal prosecutions, ousted a prominent U.S. attorney, and threatened state and local officials over their handling of the coronavirus. They also want to question him on the administration's crackdown on protests across the country. The Environmental Protection Agency's Inspector General looking into the White House's overhaul of vehicle emission standards. Back in March, the EPA slashed emission improvement requirements for vehicle makers. The Trump administration called it its largest deregulatory initiative. The White House said the cut was made has made cars cheaper, but environmentalists say the change will lead to more carbon dioxide emissions if kept in place. The Trump administration is formally asking the Federal Communications Commission to develop regulations that could apply to Facebook, Twitter, 
or other tech platforms. It follows President Donald Trump's executive order to regulate social media. The order asks the FCC to clarify a section of law shielding tech companies from being sued. Legal experts say the agency has traditionally avoided regulating Internet companies in the past. Unemployment, domestic violence, and COVID-19. As the pandemic goes on, there's a potential these issues could increase child abuse and neglect. That's why our KSAC community partners and the Children's Shelter are teaming up for a child abuse awareness town hall tomorrow. We'll have a panel of experts answering questions about the signs of abuse, how to report it, and where to seek help. Again, it airs tomorrow from 2 to 3. You can watch it at KSAT.com or wherever you stream with your T KSAT TV app. 20 till 7, 78 degrees. Ticks aren't the only bugs you should worry about if you're heading outdoors. After the break, we will explain why you don't want to be kissed by one of these critters. Welcome back at 644. This next story is probably going to get your attention thanks to Sarah Costa. When you get bit by a kissing bug, you may not even know it because the bite isn't very painful. But experts with the Texas A&M AgriLife say that the bite can affect you down the road because kissing bugs are known to spread Chagas disease. Chagas is caused by a parasite in blood feeding insects like kissing bugs. If, uh, if a dog or human is infected, the parasite can be dormant for many years. When it wakes up, it can start feeding on your heart. It's why experts like Gabe Hammer is concerned that they have seen a spike in kissing bugs across the state. We don't really understand this, you know, the factors increasing the numbers. So it could be weather related um, and there's maybe other potential factors increasing the numbers that we're seeing this year. But uh, but people don't really know what that is yet. Kissing bugs when fully grown are about an inch long and they can live for about a year. Hammer says people living in San Antonio can actually see them around their houses because the blood, the bugs are flying in from the hill country and they are attracted to lights. All right, so to prevent kissing bugs from hanging around your home, clear out brush or areas where rodents and critters hang around. That's what bugs are feeding on. To check out that booklet that te Texas A&M AgriLife put together, uh, kissing bugs or what to watch for, you can just head to our website at ksac.com. Like we said, those bites are not painful, painful, but they said they tend to bite you on your face. Also, I just recommend don't touch them and wash your hands. If you like, if your kiddos like bugs, tell them not to collect them and wash their hands. And you can read more about why on our website. Uh, she did the interview. That's why she's so knowledgeable on this. Were yeah, you surprised by what you were hearing? Um, no, my dad is really paranoid mm -hmm. about kissing bugs, and so he kind of put that on my radar a while back. Because Chagas. for some of us, this is the first time I mean, we may have seen the darn thing, but it's the first time we're hearing about the, you know, yeah, the, the risks. I remember when I was little thinking they were cute. Oh, look, kissing bugs. Mm -hmm. No. Not so cute after Not all. Not so cute. Mm -hmm. Let's check traffic right now. 646. Marcus, take it away. Well, no uh, issues out there on the roadways yet, so we're still doing great out there. Take a look at all that green. Uh, that means everyone's flowing at least at the speed limit. Moving over to Transguide, we can see that 35 and 410 up on the northeast side. No issues there. And 37 and Fair, north and south by lanes are starting to pick up in volume. Let's move over here. 21 and Grayson, north and south by lanes. No issues. However, this is northbound 35 there at Ben Zingham and over there by the hospital. And then just take a look at that far right-hand lane. No accidents there. All those folks waiting for the stoplight on the access road to make that left hand turn and cross over into the hospital. So that's the only delay that we see at this time. Thank you very much. The fine folks of Garwood, Texas, continue to quench Mike's thirst for windmill photos. Well, and just, I mean, the whole picture, though, with that orange glow on there is absolutely fantastic. You're and, Texas, huh? Yeah, and the windmill just adds that little something to it for some reason. It's that South Texas smell, charm. Yeah. Smell that brisket. Oh, I like mm -hmm. that. Yes. Mm -hmm. He said smell the brisket. So uh, it made me hungry right now. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for that, Marcus. Uh, 75 degrees in Bulverde, 78 out there at the airport. We're about three above normal right now. And of course, the humidity, boy, these numbers, you can just cut it with a knife. I mean, the dew point temperature is up to 77 at Port SA. That's beyond humid almost. You might as well just jump into a pool when you walk outside. That's about how humid it is. Now, the, the dew point temperatures will drop down somewhat later on today as they usually do, and it'll be a bit more comfortable in parts of the hill country. We're still going to have some around here as far as the humidity. So 
when the temperature uh, gets up to 96 degrees, of course, the heat index is going to be up well into the hundreds. And this will be the scenario throughout the rest of the week and going into the weekend for the foreseeable future. We're going to be keeping all this humidity around here. So as far as the uh, water vapor imagery and right there centered just to the south of Houston, you can see a little bit of a counterclockwise spin. There's just a little bit of a low, which is parked right off the coast. No big deal, really, but just enough to keep the atmosphere kind of churned up a little bit. So when we start to heat up in the afternoon hours, even by a late morning, we'll start to see a couple of the showers starting to move on in here. So just one or two of them around this morning along the coastal plain, primarily uh, by noon. Still just a shower or two and then uh, things heat up a little bit more in the middle of the afternoon and we'll start to see just a couple more of those showers, perhaps even a thunderstorm pop up. Your phone may alert you later on today that there's going to be one or two of those and that's going to be the same situation just about dinner time. A few and far between at best. And then once the sun goes down later on this evening, things are going to be just sort of settling down. So here's what it looks like as far as the upper level winds are concerned. We got this little low sitting right here, sort of uh, splitting the uprights, if you will, between the two areas of high pressure. That will stick around through today as well as tomorrow. So that's why we keep the chance for some rain around here through tomorrow. Very few and far between low chances at best and pretty much put an end to that by Thursday, Friday. Then we get into the weekend and what's interesting is we are going to start to see that high, even though it's well off to the west of us, really get us into this northerly flow around here. And I think we're going to be seeing some disturbances try and slide down in here on this northerly flow by the weekend. So even though it's still going to be hot, We'll still have another chance for a couple of showers around the area. So forecast today, 89 degrees at noon, mostly cloudy skies, uh, sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds, if you will. Uh, same things we had the past couple of days, 96 for a high temperature today. Normal high, partly sunny, a couple of showers are possible. Wouldn't count on it, though. Same thing tomorrow and then temperatures will start to creep up a little bit more going into the weekend will be just a couple of degrees above normal. Maybe one or two more showers starting off by the 1st and 2nd of August. Here we go. Yep, nope. it's called summer. Those clouds really fooled me the last couple of days. I went outside did it. Oh, it looks nice and cool. No, no. Don't be fooled by the cloud coverage. <laughs> At least you're not having the direct sun beat down on you, yeah. but it's still really darn hot. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mike. It's about 10 till 78 degrees. It's no secret paying off student loan debt can add extra stress to our lives. Join us tomorrow on GMSA where we look at how you can tackle paying off those loans. Well, if you hit snooze, let's go outside with live cam. We'll get you up to speed on some headlines and the news you need to know before you go and another look at time saver traffic and it almost looks right there like we have a little shower in progress off in the distance. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the reopening rollback. Officials cracking down on restrictions as coronavirus cases surge across the country. President Trump now pushing some governors to reopen more quickly, despite advice from White House Coronavirus Task Force members. Dr. Anthony Fauci joins us live for a morning exclusive. Also ahead, we're tracking all things tropical. We're still dealing with flooding across South Texas and another system in the Atlantic. That's all coming up, plus much more, only on GMA. See you soon. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau offering some tips to help parents discuss financial planning with their kids, no matter their age. Ivan Herrera has a breakdown of those tips in today's Money It's Personal. That's coming up at 9, right after Good Morning America. Let's get to traffic and the latest with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, Mark, things uh, still look great out there on the roadways. Take a look at the map, folks. No incidents. Moving over to Transguide, I-10 Callahan, eastbound and westbound lanes. No signs of uh, any slowdowns right now. I-10 and Freel look great. Moving over to I-10, 410, you can see the eastbound and westbound lanes of I-10 moving along nicely with no problems there. 35 at Evans. Mike? Lots of clouds, lots of humidity, and you can just see that, uh, just that sultry kind of look outside right now. 79 degrees. We did go up one degree in the past hour, 75 Bulverde and the humidity dew points are way up there. So you definitely notice it when you step outside. 96 for a high temperature today, partly cloudy skies. A mention of a shower or two, maybe, you know, one or two, kind of like Sarah got yesterday. And same thing tomorrow, then we're going to make it up into the upper 90s through the rest of the week. And another couple of showers or two are possible over the weekend. If you get a shower today, please let Sarah know directly. 
<laughs> thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Appreciate that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. Good Morning America is coming up next. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.